So uh, number four, brute force of PHP session ID. This is kind of a tag, tag team kind of research going on here. A lot of times what we see happen in the Earth and other attacks is that somebody comes up with a really cool white paper uh, describing an attack that it's on the borderline theoretical, and then another researcher or a set of researchers takes it forward and makes the attack more practical and gives it tools. And this is what has happened here. So at the bottom here, you see the reference on, with, I'm going to butcher their names, I'm sorry, it's going to be George and uh, Agelios. Uh, they came up with a research on how to brute force PHP session IDs by attacking the random number generators. And then the team from Positive Technologies created tools that are faster and better and taking advantage of these exploits. So to describe the attack in their words, it says, we provide a number of practical techniques and algorithms for exploiting randomness vulnerabilities in PHP applications. We focus on the predictability of password reset tokens and demonstrate how an attacker can take over accounts in web applications via predicting or algorithmic, algorithmically de-randomizing the PHP, PHP core randomness generators. So it's a lot to take in. Uh, let's hit, let's Let's see what we can do in the next slide. So to look at PHP session IDs and how it's put, uh, put together, this is kind of the basics that we need to understand so we can understand the attacks that these guys are going after. PHP session IDs, the tokens that keep track that main state from one user to another with the website, is, com combines a couple of pieces of information that are MD5 sum. One is you take the client IP address, uh, the IP address of the user, which is usually known to the attacker, you know, if it's themselves, or you might be able to, in other attack techniques, you might be able to send a, a user a link to back to your website and get the, the IP address of another user if you just get them to connect to your web server. You combine the client IP address with the timestamp, which is really uh, an epoch on the server side. So it has a defined set of randomness on the server side. And then the sec uh, I'm sorry, of entropy. And then you have this thing called PHP combined LCG, which is it's, it's a random number generator, a pseudo random number generator on the PHP side. You smash all this together in in a in an MD5 sum, and that's your PHP session ID. So that's the basics there. Now, looking a little bit deeper into the PHP combined LCG. Um, and how it's generated. It's using two timestamps. One is the timestamp, the epoch on the local server, and also the process ID of the Apache uh, web server, whatever process it's running on, depending. And again, the entropy is all over the map. You can read it in the slides. The entire idea here of these particular attacks is to reduce the amount of entropy uh, in, in the PHP session ID, particularly the timestamp. So if, the, if a hacker has the exact second of the request that they send, they can brute force the attack, uh, the PHP session ID, after about 500,000 attempts. Now, the reason this is possible, as I'll get to in a second, is through the, the date header of the server. So the date header, when it comes back from the server, tells you the second on the server. Epoch is down to the microsecond, so you can get down to a little bit of entropy, it's still 500,000 uh, tries. So what these guys did is they came up with a couple of tax techniques to reduce the amount of entropy using a little brute force, and they set a $700 CPU, and they could start reducing the amount of uh, requests that they have to send to crack the PHP session ID. The two attacks that they described were adversarial time synchronization and something else called re uh, request twins that both approximate the, the time, the exact time down to the microsecond on the server. So let's move on to slide 50, and I'll kind of describe uh, how this how this works. The, the crypto algorithms behind this are uh, admittedly a little over my head, but I'll try to describe the basics of it. First is what's called adversarial time synchronization. The way it works is you try to synchronize the time with the local time that on the attacker's web server with the time on the target web server, whatever that may be. And you, re and you do this by sending a pair of requests at the same time. Uh, and then you dynamically delay uh, your timing when you send these uh, requests in. So if you notice here in the, the double request here in the green, you can see on the server, the date header, when it comes back, the, the second hand uh, goes from 14 to 15. And that allows you to approximate and synchronize within a, within a margin of error locally. Because the more you can approximate, the more you can whittle down what the exact epoch is uh, on the server, the easier it is to brute force the PHP session ID. 
Let's go to the second attack technique, which is called uh, request twins. So the way this uh, the way this works is that they make two particular requests. Uh, the first one to reset their own password, and the second one to reset the password of an uh, of an administrator. So what they do is they start to approximate what the what the uh, what the time is on the web server. If they get close enough, the system will allow them to reset the password on the web server because the entropy on the epoch and the and the predictability of the PID, the process ID, is not that big. So this is where the the positive technology uh, team improved upon the attack technique. Uh, they actually wrote, rewrote their own tools. There was a password pro module, um, but it didn't have all the bells and whistles that they liked, so they wrote their own GUI tool that they have available on their particular website. And in their, in their own words, it says they can do 16 million hashes per second seed calculation, the thing that where the randomness generator is seeded from, uh, takes less than an hour on a 3.2 gigahertz quad core i5. And then if you have the PID and the PH, uh, PHP combined LCG, one can compute the seed using MT RAM. Now, there's a couple of ways. You, you know, the, the, the PID, you can, you can try to get the web server to restart itself. You can kind of get a range. But the other one they may notice of is both PHP and Apache's uh, server status has the ability to kind of, if it's available, if it's public, you can actually get the process ID just by asking the web server if the Apache server has the server status. And, uh, and PHP has another uh, version, but I'm blanking on the name now. So uh, moving on to slide 52. So to try to describe what's going on here, if you can interact with a, new, with a newly seeded seed generator, if you get it to restart, predicting the seed, what it uses for the random generator is possible. To do this, they, basically what they did is they generated a, a fresh processor and interacted with them for multiple requests. They started sending these attacks through. Uh, then they used a side channel leak to get the session identifier the, the date uh, the date thing. If they can get the session identifier, you know, the PHP session ID, they can predict the seed. All this boils down to is they can predict the PHP session IDs and take over users' accounts. Again, given the time constraints, I can't go over the algorithms or exactly how all this works and fit together and do demos. But the research is very, very cool. Um, and a lot of applications are vulnerable to this. They want to, I want to say, or at least they said, basically all of them that do some, some sort of a random number generator because the PHP core doesn't have a secure random number generator. So 53, some of the uh, advice they looked at on what to look for for vulnerable code on slide 53. Look at all the empty RAND, RAND, unique ID, shuffle, and LCG value functions. The only secure function, and this is their word, I can't verify this for accuracy, but I'll take their word for it. The only secure function is OpenSSL random pseudo bytes. But this is rarely used in web applications. Don't exactly know why. Uh, RAND can also be predicted. There is a patch. Uh, I'm not, not exactly sure how to pronounce the name. Suhosen patch. Uh, it does not patch the MC RAND or S RAND, uh, but it should be installed. And at the end of the day, the best advice that they're able to give is that using URAM is the is the most secure way. Um, when I was reading all the documentation, there was a lot of. Uh, disagreement of what was the most secure way or where the vulnerable vulnerability existed. Uh, but the tools are available to hack out there. So there is a problem somewhere. You can make it stronger. And different infrastructures play a role in this. For instance, if you're working on a singular web server, um, it's much easier to predict the time and do this sort of attack. But if the application server is one step removed in the peers, then it gets substantially harder. So there's a lot of operational things at play here. Hopefully, I did the uh, the attack justice and kind of give people an idea that the pseudo random number generators in PHP are not great, and which makes it problematic for secure PHP session IDs. 